Hey guys, welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So this episode is viewer appreciation mail. Um, we got a few packages in the mail in the last week or so, and uh, we're going to take a look at some kind of interesting tools that uh, that folks sent in. Uh, thought I would enjoy, and thought you guys would enjoy. So uh, let's uh, pop over to the bench and uh, go through this stuff and uh, take a look at it. There's some uh, neat stuff there. So let's go. All right. So this first one here. This, this first lot comes to us from uh, uh, Bill Hopcraft, and he's in uh, Millington, which is kind of a cool name for a machinist uh, town, uh, Millington, or Millington, New Jersey. Let me uh, put this stuff out here. You guys can get a look at it here. Some kind of neat things. Let's uh, let's take a look at this stuff first here. Um, all right, let's let's look at these counter bores. So we got a bunch of counter bores here, uh, different styles. Okay, these are fixed pilot style here. Okay, uh, multi flute, and then um, you have interchangeable pilots. And there's no pilots in these, um, so you get the pilots separate, and they have a little stem that gets locked in with that little screw. So it gives you the ability, the flexibility to change the pilot diameters. Um, this is a Philister head uh, uh, counter bore, um, and the, you know most of these are machine screw sizes and uh, whatnot. So um, you know most of these are pretty rough looking. Uh, some a couple of the uh, the interchangeable ones uh, look pretty good. So these will probably go into the uh, uh, the trade bucket and. Um, uh, or get passed on to somebody that uh, that doesn't have any counter bores. So, all right, let's set those aside. Okay. So this next one, this is kind of neat. Uh, we actually have one of these at work, so uh, I'm familiar with this. And um, it's what I think is neat about it is it has this quick change um, coupling here. That's kind of neat. And you can see it's got a flat and then a. Uh, um, a, a radius groove here, okay? Well, there's a cross pin that goes across inside that's kind of tangent. Excuse me. And then uh, you put this in and you find that pin and then it goes in the rest of the way. And then when you basically you engage and now it drives, okay? And it can't come out either. So uh, I, actually, uh, I actually stole this design at one point for a project that I was working on where I had to make a um, it was actually a, an air cylinder that had to be removed from a, a system uh, easily, right? So I made a, you know, kind of a plug on the end of it like this, and it went in and it rotated, and then it was oriented properly. Um, but you could take it on and off uh, quite easily. So anyway, kind of a, it's a simple, it's easy to make. Um, you know, your precision comes from the diameter, and then this is just basically a locking mechanism and an orientation um, thing. So the only tricky part is, uh, you know, if you want a particular orientation when it when it stops moving, you got to be really careful when you uh, when you do that um, the gro uh, that side groove there. So anyway, and this one's um, got a Morse taper on it. Okay, and. Um, a um, uh, a very strange, hand, I don't know, almost hand ground bit there that somebody did. So, uh, um, and then, you know, if you're lucky, you got a bunch of those around. <laughs> All right. So moving on, let's take a look here. Next one is a uh, uh, Porsche Porsche Brothers, uh, Chicago, Illinois, and it's a 5C collet. And this thing's pretty old here, okay? Uh, I have no idea how old this thing is, but uh, it's just got the old look. All right, let's see if I can get this thing out of here. And their corrosion inhibiting paper did its job for I don't know how many years here. It's like this heavy wax cosmoline coated paper here, and the collet is in, is in excellent condition. So this is a brand new 1 16th um, uh, 5C collet uh, made by the Porsche brothers in, um, in uh, Chicago. The uh, thing's immaculate. But look at this stuff. I mean, it's, it's heavy duty paper there, huh? Kind of neat. So, in fact, it's getting all over my fingers there. So let's set that aside. That's great. Okay, next one. Yet another insert holder, okay. Um, 
so this you know this thing's brand new basically but it's got some problems it's missing the clamp okay so a lot of these things are old and um, you know they're difficult to find parts for and probably not worth messing around with so I'll throw this in the um, in the trade bucket and uh, you know if somebody's lucky enough to have a, a pile of the little clamps you know it's it's basically a clamp that holds the insert down but when you loosen it it swivels out of the way and you can get the get the insert on and off uh, and then this is a little eccentric jobber here to uh, to pull the insert back in the pocket so uh, um, yeah anyway so uh, that's a big one inch shank on that little monkey there so uh, but brand new look at that thing okay TRW okay next one these are cool so these are small hole gauges here, okay, and um, some of you guys may be familiar with these. So it has a split ball and then a tapered element that uh, you can pull into that ball and um, uh, let's see here, let's, let's do this, we'll do a demo on this here. Let's see, those are, yeah, it'll be this one here. See if we can do this and you guys can see properly here. All right. So basically, you wind that out and you use it like a telescoping gauge, like that. Okay, a little too tight there, Mr. Wizard. All right. Okay, and then you you mic over that. Okay, they actually they're they're pretty good. They got a really good feel because they got these spherical surfaces. So we when you're in a nice smooth hole. Um, they feel really good and you can tell when you got good they're easy to tell when you have good contact now there's two types these are the I call them the full the full ball type and then the there's another type that's uh, the balls truncated so that you can measure uh, down in a slot in the bottom of a shallow slot uh, that works pretty good so uh, anyway Bill thanks uh, very much uh, this is some nice stuff and uh, we'll um, uh, we'll get this uh, along to somebody that uh, that can use this stuff. I, I have all these things, so uh, uh, we'll, we'll put these in the uh, in the trade bucket, and then uh, we'll get these into uh, in the in the hands of folks that can use them. So thanks a lot. All right, this next one. Now, who doesn't like that? Look at that. This comes to us all the way from uh, from England, uh, from uh, John Sharp, and uh, I guess. There's a, a hardware store near near him, and uh, he walks by this display, and he and every time he sees it, he sees the uh, the Ox Tool, and I'm I'm aware of these guys because uh, when you do a search oxtool.com, uh, these guys come up. <laughs> they they beat me to it. So uh, anyway, this is a nice uh, rubber mallet, and you can see I've already used it for something. I clobbered something with it the, the other day, and uh, it's been sitting there uh, waiting to waiting to show itself on camera and uh, it's funny because I was I was up on a ladder uh, hitting something and the ladder was was blue and black just the same as this so I was uh, color coordinated while I was wailing away up there so John thank you very much this is great um, uh, you know what's not to like about a new hammer here okay so uh, a 680 gram hammer so uh, and look it's got the it's got a cool little uh, ox logo I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave this on there so uh, I like that so anyway John thank you very much I appreciate you uh, sending that all the way from England uh, for me that uh, it's very humbling uh, that people take the time to uh, to do that okay thank you all right so we we've got a hammer theme going uh, on this go around and uh, this is a cute little uh, uh, Thor hammer and uh, this comes to us from uh, Paul Simons and uh, he's in he's in uh, the UK as well and he emailed me and uh, decided that he wanted to send something in and uh, and this is what he sent which is wonderful it's a cute this is just a cute little hammer in fact I don't have one this small uh, a rawhide uh, face hammer this small uh, my smallest one is yeah, it's a little bit bigger than this about half again as big now this one's interesting because it has a copper face on one side and a, um, a rawhide face on the other. So the head has some mass, which is kind of nice. And um, this is 
a, an interesting hammer handle shape, okay? So I wonder if it's a European uh, kind of style uh, handle, but I, I do like the, it's a pleasing shape. It's got, it's got some hips on it, so it looks pretty good. So, and I'm gonna leave that label on it because that's pretty cool too. So, uh, Paul, thank you very much. That's a, uh, that's a, a great little hammer. Gee, I wonder if the A is the size, huh? Interesting. Does he say how it was? Oh, he, he, one thing he did say was uh, this is the small one. I guess they have a uh, um, a five kilogram version like this, and I'm like, ooh, that, that, now now we're talking, right? That's an A bomb hammer there. So, <laughs> but the shipping uh, from the UK would be uh, cost prohibitive. So, uh, but this is much appreciated, Paul. This is a great little whapper, and uh, I appreciate you sending it into the show. Thank you, sir. All right. This next lot is is uh, is pretty interesting too, and uh, this this is a local viewer here, okay, and uh, I got I got names on the brain here. Oh, this is uh, Chip Banks, and uh, he's local here in Santa Rosa. So there's a, I guess there's a story here. Um, let's let's do this one first because this is kind of interesting. Um, and those of you that have watched my videos. Uh, know that I did a, a goofy video on repairing a putty knife for my mom and um, they had this putty knife that was if, if not an exact copy of this very similar to this um, you know it's a two dollar putty knife right but my mom is in love with this putty knife right so I did a video uh, it's kind of a spoof video fixing it for her so uh, in fact, she spoofed me because she hung it on the wall and there are all the family pictures because uh, now it's like super valuable. Um, so anyway, Chip thought that was a funny video. So he, uh, he saw this at the flea market or whatever and he picked it up and, uh, and threw it in the box. So uh, Chip, that's a good joke. I like that. That's funny. Um, next thing, uh, we got some uh, blue Sharpies. It's my uh, favorite color here these days. And, um, you, know, I, you know, you wear out about... Uh, one every uh, one a month at least, so uh, you can always use those. Those are pretty cool. Um, this thing here is very interesting here, okay? So <sighs> Pratt & Whitney, um, they uh, marketed these machines called Kellering machines. Actually, you know what? I'm going to pause here for a second because I'm going to get the book and we'll look at the picture of the, Keller, the Kellering machine. Okay, so... Let's see, hopefully we can see this here. So this is the big Keller machine here, okay? Pratt & Whitney Keller machine. And what it's doing here, and I showed this before, um, it's got a, a template that it's following here, uh, and then it's cutting a, uh, um, a, a die part, basically, um, you know, a large die part. So it's kind of a tracer mill of sorts. Now, what's in this tube, Okay, and this is great because it says Keller Cutter on it, right? Let's open this up, and there it is, okay? So basically, it's a ball end mill with a long shank on it, uh, and, you know, you're going to be using long tools on a machine like this. Let's see, what does it say here? 4E, 3 quarter, e, okay, bunch of, bunch of stuff on there, okay? Oh, and it's, and it's tapped in the, uh, in the tail there, so it holds it into the, uh, holds it in there. Now, I looked, I poked around in here, and I couldn't find, uh, I couldn't find the, uh, that particular cutter, so um, I don't know what the, the vintage of this particular one, oh, there, oh, actually, you know what? That's pretty damn close right there, isn't it? Let me flip this around. Tapered. That's not tapered. Okay, it's not tapered. Oh, well, you know what? Look at that. That's pretty damn close right there. Style E? Is that an E? Oh, yeah, 40 there. Look at that. I found it. <laughs> I guess I didn't try that hard before. So uh, there it is right there. So that's a 4E ball end mill. And there she blows right there. Uh, pretty neat. So, uh, Chip, hey, thanks for sending that in. That's cool. And I, I just happened to get this book recently, so uh, kind of closes the loop on that uh, on that whole deal there. So, uh, go figure. All right, that's cool. I like that kind of stuff. So, uh, uh, so anyway, that's kind of a strange cutter there. I um, that probably would fit my tailstock. Um, 
and uh, in the lathe, although uh, using that in the lathe might be kind of interesting, so uh, uh, we'll see. You know, you can turn that straight uh, as well, but uh, this is probably nice and hard. But the tube and everything's kind of intact, so uh, it's kind of neat, and it's a little bit of history there and, uh, on uh, Pratt & Whitney milling machines. All right. Okay, last thing in the lot that the chip sent is this little guy here, and um, this is metal box, and it's a little Whitney punch. Of course, it's upside down when I open it up. Okay, and uh, this is the original little wood insert here, which is cool because it's, it's tagged on top, which is kind of neat. Look at that; it's even belts. Yeah, that's just. Some some guy at Whitney carved that out or whatever. Okay, so uh, anyway, it's a little Whitney hand punch, and uh, seems to operate fine. And uh, you know, look at that, pretty good. Chip, thank you very much. Those are some nice uh, things he sent into the show, and uh, they are much appreciated. So um, I have uh, I don't know three or four of these, and uh, so this one I'll probably uh, pass along to somebody that doesn't have one. So uh, somebody in the uh, in the uh, machining community. Okay, all right. Thanks, Chip. Appreciate it.